This is Twit. A group known as Searchlight Cyber posted an analysis about the state of the DDoS for hire business, which exists on the so-called dark web. That made me realize that while I've referred to the dark web often in the past, we've never really stopped to talk about it. For anyone who's unsure, the dark web is actually a thing, or, or rather a place. It's not just an expression. And you cannot get there from here. It's not just a matter of using some secret URL to bring up a dark website. There are three terms used within the cybersecurity community to refer to three classes of the web. There's the clear web, the deep web, and the dark web. The web that we all use every day is more formally known as the clear web. It's what Google indexes and where anyone can easily wander with links that are shared with us either by a public search engine or by other web pages. This is the traditional web that Tim Berners-Lee first conceived of when he was at CERN. And interestingly, this clear web only contains roughly 4% of the entire web content. It's like the tip of an iceberg. So where's the rest? Most of the rest resides in the so-called deep web. This is the web content that is not indexed publicly because it requires authenticated access through a portal of some kind. So this includes things like our credit reports, IRS tax records, and medical histories, fee-based content, membership websites, and confidential corporate web pages. Those are all considered to exist on the deep web. And estimates place this deep web content at roughly 96% of the total browser accessible web. And finally, a small subset of this deep web is known as the dark web. The dark web's servers are deliberately hidden and are accessible only through the Tor browser on the Tor network. It's necessary to use Tor because those servers and the services they offer wish to remain hidden and quite difficult, if not nearly impossible, to locate. And it's worth noting that despite its ominous sounding name, not all of the dark web is used for illicit purposes, though this is another place where the emergence of cryptocurrency has transformed the place from a, ba a backwater hacker curiosity into a significant collection of criminal enterprises. My advice would be to stay as far away from the dark web as possible, so I won't be offering any guide or tips to accessing this dark underbelly of the Internet. But if you're really curious and want to go poking around down there, you'll find that the clear web contains many step-by-step how-to guides into setting up a secure sandboxed OS, obtaining the Tor browser, putting on your hazmat suit, holding your breath, and taking the plunge. Good luck. And as for what the Searchlight Cyber Guys found out about DDoS for hire services being offered on the dark web, there was nothing really noteworthy. It's pretty much what we would expect. Portals exist where people can create an account and transfer some of their cryptocurrency to it to create a positive balance. Then they select the type of DDoS attack they wish to launch, either at OSI stack level 4, which is the down at the transport layer, so using either UDP or TCP flooding packets, or up at level 7, which is the application layer. So an HTTP connection and query flood. Then the target IP or URL is provided and the size and duration of the attack is specified. And the site takes care of conducting the attack from there. One thing that did surprise me was that one of these services named the Nightmare Stressor claimed to have 
566,109 registered users. That number cannot be verified, of course, but it does perhaps support the view from up here out on, you know, in the clear web, you know, up in the light. Uh, we see more or less constant DDoS attacks, so, you know, so much so that they're just prevalent. Talk to any tier one internet provider and it's like, oh yeah, you know, that's just happening all the time. So 566,109 registered users of this one service where if, if you want someone to be attacked, it's not hard to do. And it, actually it doesn't even cost that much, which is another reason we're seeing so many of them. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. IT Pro's new Cyber Skills is a training tool for all members of your organization. Get cybersecurity awareness training for non IT professionals and secure your business on all fronts. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out their form. Secure your business. Visit go.acilearning.com/twit today.